As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Hi, I'm Reverend Deanna Cox with DKR United Church Online. I'm a minister with the United Church of Canada serving the communities of Daysland, Killam and Roseland and this community here online. Our opening prayer this morning was written by Reverend Joanna Har Herider, a pastor at Peace Mennonite Church. Please join me down by the river to pray. Let us pray. Veni Sancte Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of life. Come through the hard and holy remembrances of those who have been driven from this land, of families torn apart, of landscapes that cannot be put back together. Vene Sancte Spiritus. Come through the stories written in scripture, published in print, the images seen on screens, the pain whispered among friends. Vene Sancte Spiritus. Come through the songs we sing, the words we proclaim, the signs we hold, the prayers we raise. Come in our bewilderment, our stumbling, our grief, and in our courage. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of life. 
Bene, Sancte Spiritus. Amen. That the Holy Spirit meets us wherever we are and that I invited you to light a candle and um, light a candle and remember that Vene Sancte Spiritus, come Holy Spirit breath of life. The Holy Spirit meets us wherever we are gathered. And so friends, I hope you enjoyed the hymn at the beginning and the the prayer down by the river and that we gather at rivers and at places like rivers since the dawn of time and that we are called to remember those life-giving places as a uh, people of faith and as people of treaty six we are called to remember the promises that we made in those treaties and the work towards reconciliation that is needed in them. And so friends, as we gather this day, may we hear these words of scripture. The first reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. From there, Jesus sent out and set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not any, want anyone to know where he was. Yet he could not escape notice. A woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs then he said to her for saying that you may go the spirit has left your daughter so she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone our next reading is also from the gospel of mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 9 Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teachings, he said to them, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and some birds came and ate it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, but since it had no depth of soil, when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears listen. The final reading I would like to share with you this morning is a litany for racial justice based on Micah 6, 8. It was written by Katea Ukachov. God has told you what is good. 
What does God require of the faithful? The prophet says, do justice. The crowds shout, no justice, no peace. The prophet says, love kindness. The people cry, hands up, don't shoot. The people lament, I can't breathe. The prophet says, walk humbly with your God. The faithful have no choice. They walk and they pray and they stand between the innocent and the would-be perpetrators. God has told you that God justice is good. God has told you that kindness is good. God has asked you to walk humbly and so you must walk. Friends, let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. A reminder to send in any prayer requests for um, prayers of celebration or prayers of concern. Um, you can text them to me, you can comment in the box underneath the video, and I, if I say your name, it means I see your comment. I don't actually see you, although I really wish I could. But yes, um, so I remind you to pass in your prayers of celebration and concern in any way you can. Friends, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts for reflection on this word. This is not my gospel that builds these walls between us, drawing borders that separate, raising flags of supremacy, empires of hate in the name of freedom. This is not my gospel that casts the immigrant out Pulling mothers' urgent hands from the cries of their children. Expelling souls to isolation because of the color of their skin, their sexuality, the gender, the class, the nation they live in. This is not my gospel that spits on the face of God, lashing his image with words of rejection, warmongering, dominating the weak, diminishing salvation to a conditional thing while hope lies lost and bleeding, weeping for relief. This is not my gospel that turns communities inwards, planting distrust in their hearts towards the beauty of difference, labeling neighbors as enemies and defining us by division. This is not my gospel with its eyes full of pride, when injustice is clothed in lies, when grace is caged, we face the great divide. Humanity displaced from love. My gospel is love, who crossed the chasm between heaven and earth, speaking worth to all in endless benevolence. Love who sat in the dirt with the rejected, erasing their shame with the touch of acceptance, who reached for those society deserted, embracing the leper, the filthy, the hurting. Love who clutched the souls of his rivals in nail-pierced hands, holding them free from hell's vicious venom, declaring them brother, sister, cherished, forgiven. Love who tore the temple veil, divine grasping flesh, flesh clutching divine, crying, you are mine. Precious mankind, awake from your slumber and open your eyes to love. Who walked through the walls, crossing the divide with burning passion, calling for those who have lost their place, breaking tomb after tomb after tomb to reveal a world of eternal embrace. This is my gospel. This is the cry heard in the night of unrest. Clutched close to heartbroken chests, crying, reach for me, 
reach past the borders, reach to the wounds that have torn us apart, plant seeds of compassion where malice has grown, throw your arms open and welcome the forsaken home, break down the walls that hate has raised, turn your eyes to the face of the shamed and realize that it is mine, it is yours, we are one reborn and remade, let the stars fall, let mercy cascade, let the heavens pour, I gave you my all, I will give it again and again and again, I throw down my kingship, I throw down my fame, to be with you in the rejection, to hold you in the pain, you are not the outsider, nor a child of shame, let the depths proclaim to the heights above, that you are loved. A huge thank you to the artists that compiled that for making that video available for us to stream for free. Uh, resources like that are greatly appreciated. So friends, I really wanted to talk to you today about seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly and in solidarity. I wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart chat with you about the fear and anger that is simmering in us, in our communities, and in our world. And each time I would work up the courage to do so, I would get nervous in the next breath about the reactions, the potential reactions. Exhaustion from hearing Black Lives Matter every day in the news, all day. Warnings to not talk about reconciliation too much or we might lose people. Frustration at once more being made to feel bad for the body we were born into, a white body. I worried that you might tune out and the world desperately needs us all to tune in. For this is very, very important. I am no expert on racial justice. But so many of the stories that are out in the world are not my story. They are not my gospel. And not saying anything feels like I am complicit, that I am agreeing with the, uh, what others are saying. And so as my thoughts have been churning inside me, uh, one day this week I was standing at the fridge pondering what and how to say it. And as I was standing there, this magnet caught my attention. The black fists reminded me of the, the Black Lives Matter protests and the people standing with their fists in the air. It says, as you may have read, we may be lefties, but we have rights too. And this silly little magnet reminded me that, yeah, I'm not an expert. And more importantly, it brought to my attention just how much we don't even realize that we don't know. For example, I didn't realize just how much our world is centered around right-handed people until I had children that were left-handed. I didn't realize the millions of accessibility obstacles in our everyday life until my dad had his first knee surgery. I didn't think that the language that we use to name ourselves or to name God mattered until I met someone for whom it was a huge deal. For them, it meant that they could understand God's unconditional love for the very first time. 
it reminded me of the moment that I realized not all couples can walk down the beach or the street holding hands with their beloved. And how much privilege my heteronormative relationship gives me. Each time I encountered something that made me realize how much I didn't know, it also made me realize the depth of things that I take for granted. It made me realize for a moment the amount of privilege that I embody. Now I want to assure you that I fully believe you are all good people. <laughs> I've yet to meet someone who has introduced themselves saying, Hi, my name's Deanna and I'm a full out racist. We are good people with good intentions. But I think a big part of our problem comes from what we do not know what we haven't even yet realized. And from not ever talking about what it means to be in the, to be white, to be in the bodies that we are in. There's a video that, it, well, there's multitude of videos, but one of them going around talks about how people of color tell their children rules to get home safely. They preach this at them from a very early age. How to respond when they're stopped by the police so that they can get home safely. Yes, we too may have sat our children down and given them rules to get home safely. But have we ever talked with our children about how people might treat them differently and what to do about it? Do we talk to our children about our his, the history of our country and the choices that were made and how, though it is not our doing, the impacts of those choices are still being felt today? I read a story on Facebook about a woman's recent experience after having run into a Starbucks, which was located in a side of department store to grab a drink. Both she and a black man walked through the exit at the same time. The security alarm went off as it often does, and they both stopped and turned and waited for the clerk. The clerk only asked the black man to show his receipts. The woman inquired, what about mine? To which the clerk waved her off saying, oh, you're fine. To which the woman then replied, why? People are going to treat us differently. And we need to talk about why, what we are going to do about it. We need to find the words to call them to account. We need to teach ourselves and our children how to seek justice, how to call to account systemic racism and prejudice that we encounter on a daily basis. Like that woman in the store did. Like the Syrophoenician woman did with Jesus in our scripture reading. She was a Gentile a person of difference, who held Jesus accountable to his message of unconditional love and healing grace, insisting that her Syrophoenician daughter, a Gentile, was also worthy of that love and grace too. We need to love kindness, to be gentle with ourselves as we learn to be better allies. Like the sower of seeds, sometimes our efforts are going to fall on rocky or thorny ground. Sometimes they're going to go well, and sometimes we are going to make mistakes. Ask for grace. Give yourself grace. Pull up the weeds 
wipe off the muck, but we must keep trying. Let us start by walking humbly. We are not experts. We don't know how much we do not know. And it is not the responsibility of others to teach us what we do not know. We need to do our own work first. That means making time to understand the fullness of our history as a country. Knowing the stories of Africville in Nova Scotia. If you don't know what that is, look it up. And the history of residential schools. If you don't know what it means to be a part of Treaty 6, look it up. When someone says Black Lives Matter, listen and resist the urge to say all lives matter. For it is only when the needs of the last and the least have been met that the kingdom of God will be near. Friends, I know the 24-hour news cycle gets exhausting. I know that many among us have our own trials and burdens to bear. And that for a lot of us, our lives have not been easy. In no way am I attempting to diminish that. I only hope to draw awareness to the gospel life we have chosen as people of faith to inspire you to seek justice with every fiber of your being, to sow seeds of kindness with reckless abandon, and to walk in humble solidarity with the ones who need us most, knowing that this is a messy and a lifelong journey. May we arise and go from here. Amen. speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire but have not love my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain to share in the comments or to text me any prayers of celebration or concern you might have. I've got a couple in and thank you for that. 
Um, even though we cannot meet easily in person and we gather virtually to worship together, our ministry continues. And we are continuing to minister through a young adult chat group that happens on Mondays at 7 p.m. We've just started a kids club that is meeting on Wednesdays at 1.30 via Zoom to discuss an online adventure club. You can contact the office or myself if you know of any children in your life or young adults that would like to participate in either of those things. I would also um, ask that you watch. Um, we're hoping to ha find an easy way that we can all watch a movie together and then join in a discussion after. It's a very timely movie. Um, like uh, the, a very timely movie called The Hate You Give, and I think it would be a wonderful thing. So watch Facebook and emails for ways to join us in that. Also, a bit of technical information. This Tuesday, June the 9th, there is a board meeting in Killam. They're going to meet in person with physical, with social distancing rules in place. And finally, I would like to share our huge success of our fundraiser to help us continue to do these kinds of ministry work. We did a COVID haircut fundraiser and we did it. We set a goal for ourselves to um, beat $5,000 and we did it. We blew that out of the water. We raised $6,000 and seventy dollars so my friends pat yourselves on the back and um let us let us rejoice in the celebration of raising that for ministry and you know my six thousand dollar haircut doesn't look too bad so thank you so much for your generosity and speaking of generosity, we have all been blessed by the Spirit with many, many gifts. And we are each gifted, gifted differently, but called to give as we are able so that everyone might have abundant life. And the whole body of Christ may be together. So if you're a regular financial donor to DKR United Online or to one of the communities, Daysland, Killam, or Roseland United Churches, thank you. Thank you for giving and supporting our ministry. If you're not yet a regular donor and have found this video and our ministry supportive in some way, a word of hope a challenge to live more fully into the kingdom of God, inspiration to spread love and compassion in your corner of the world. I encourage you to consider making a financial contri contribution to our ministry. There are many ways to give, not all are financial, and they are detailed in the link that is included in the description below this video. Friends, May God bless you and all the ways that you share your abundant gifts with our communities and with the world. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Danse. The hoop dance is a healing dance. And today I wanted to dance for all those who are feeling despair and for those who are in need of healing. It represents unity and strength if we stand beside each other. I was taught that some of us may have different beliefs. Some of us may look different. Some of us may be from different tribes. But we all share a common tribe, which is the two-legged tribe. And the only way we're going to move forward is by supporting each other and by loving one another. Please support our brothers and sisters who are in need during this time. Hi, hi.
Let us join our hearts in prayer. Divine Spirit, come. Breathe your peace into our communities, our nations, our world. Quell the hatred and violence that threatens to overtake us. Make space for us to meet our siblings in Christ who are hungry, who are hurting. Open our hearts to hear their pain. Give us courage to speak up and to speak out against injustice in every time and place so that no more lives will be taken in the name of privilege and power. Holy Spirit, come, rush among us like a violent wind, stir us out of our complacency. Make yourself known among us. Give us ears to hear your word, alive and at work in us and through us so that your deeds of love and grace might be proclaimed throughout the earth. Holy Spirit, there are those who think the church has stopped gathering or that the church has lost meaning or lost its way. They do not hear your voice of hope. The voices they hear do not reflect your gospel. Make yourself visible, we pray, in our neighbors, in our neighborhoods, experiencing economic disparity, in food insecurity, in oppression. Make yourself visible in the hands that serve all who are hurting regardless of race, gender, or socioeconomic circumstance. Make yourself visible, Spirit of the Living God, in hearts that listen to differing perspectives and show mercy. Holy Spirit, come. Veni Sancti Spiritus, come, Holy Spirit, breath of life. Pour yourself upon all flesh, so that the prophecies of your sons and daughters will be heard and understood, so that the visions of youth will be embraced and explored, so that the dreams of the aged will be made real. Turn our hearts to you. Give us wisdom and discernment. Give us compassion and empathy. Give us courage and kindness, comfort and hope, so that we might truly be for the grieving and fearful everywhere, a sign of your living presence at work in this weary, war-torn world. Vene Sancte. Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of life, as we pray especially this day. For Terry Lee Gordon and her ongoing treatments, for Clara's continued recovery, for the family of Keith Cameron at his recent passing, for all who are protesting injustice around the world, may they do so safely and peacefully. For all law enforcement who have been condemned, some justly and mostly unjustly, be with them as they do the hard work of walking the line between keeping people safe and allowing their voices to be heard. And O oh God, we celebrate, we rejoice with the Waldner family as they 
rejoice and celebrate at the engagement of Jordan and Krista. We ask that you bless this new promise and guide them as they journey towards their lives together. Oh God, we gather these and all the prayers of our hearts as we join our voices saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive all who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I found these lovely words in some of the many resources that are coming out in this time. And I offer them to you as a blessing. Friends, may you remember that the Holy Spirit gave not one, but two gifts, the power of voice for those who needed to speak and the power of listening for those who needed to be quiet and listen. May we go forth striving to be better allies, knowing that we are held in the unconditional love of God, the unlimited grace of Jesus the Christ, and the unending presence of the Holy Spirit. May we go forth and like the holy three-in-one, choose love in all that we say and do. Amen. It was an honor to be among you this day. I hope you have something that you can ruminate on through the week. God bless you and keep you. I leave you with this powerful anthem written by Mark Miller called I Choose Love. I hope you enjoy it.
Yeah. Uh-huh.